Hi! Today we're going to talk about weapon vouchers in Fortnite Save the World. If you're not sure what weapon vouchers are, basically you can use them to buy a weapon out of season. So there are different seasons in Fortnite Save the World. If you're in a dark room, you're about to get flashbang, but I have a timeline that I link in every video, including this one, that shows when stuff tends to come around. This is very important. This is the expected return date. Not every weapon comes back on the exact same day every year, but the general gist of the weeks of the year the months of the year and the events are all pretty set in stone so what weapon vouchers do is they allow you to just pick up a weapon that is not currently available <laughs> whenever you want now i laugh at that because you can actually voucher stuff when it's in season for example i'm recording this on february 14th which means i could voucher anti cuddle sarah but she comes out in like two days, that would be a pretty bad idea. So the way that I like to look at vouchers is that they are essentially a time save. And if you're going to be spending them, you're gonna to wanna to consider a few things because I'll tell you right now, this video has no one conclusion. I'm gonna emphasize certain weapons in this video, but there is no one set of weapons that everybody should voucher. I think there are some great weapons in the game that uh, are really, really good and that everybody should have. Link to that video down below, by the way. It's an old video, but it covers everything but the plasmatic discharger. And we'll We'll be getting into that today. That's a great resource for all the best weapons in the game. But what I'm saying is there isn't one set of weapons everybody should voucher because once you've got like the top best weapons that everybody grabs, once you've got the Xenon Bow, Mythic Weapons, Pot Shot, the Deatomizer, or I guess now the Discharger kind of replaced it, what do you do next? You know, what weapons do you use? How do you have some fun? So because of that, I can't give you the exact weapons that you should voucher. What you need to consider is what you enjoy using. How good is that weapon? When does it come out? Because you should never voucher something that is coming out in a couple of months. The best weapons of value are the ones that are furthest away. So depending on when you're watching this video, that might change. If you're watching this on August 21st, I know this isn't a hero video, but you might not want to voucher Sledgehammer because he's probably available that day. You should always look behind you on the recent events so like i said i'm recording february 14th the december january november months would be the best time save to voucher a weapon now a lot of the weapons that i just mentioned were changed today as of recording in the 23.4 update today a lot of weapons no longer require vouchers that's actually a major change in fact if i take an example here and go all the way down to the expansion schematics the best probably most universal weapon in the entire game this is not actually the best weapon there are very very many exceptions to this rule is like the xenon bow everybody has a xenon bow everybody loves it no longer takes a voucher the pot shot no longer takes a voucher you no longer need a voucher the deatomizer it's amazing storm king weapons you can never actually unlock these without just fighting the storm king that's how you do that but this video has actually gotten a lot shorter because i made this video a long time ago i made a whole video on what to get with your weapon vouchers looking back at this weapon vouchers hadn't actually technically been added to the the game so i recommended a lot of weapons that are now flexible and i spent a good seven and a half minutes on six perks now that was valid at the time because we just got a bunch of new six perks and it made a huge difference to the game but i have actually broken down all of those six perks in my cory perk video i'm going to link that down below because a lot of the weapons i'm going to recommend in today's video are really really good because of specific six perks and if you want that six perk you should spend a cory perk now it's okay because cory perk is not that difficult to get uh, i've got like 15 of them stacked up and i've spent more than 10 in my lifetime you can get Perk. And that video down below will talk about all the different six perks, the best weapons to spend it on, and uh, how you should be attributing those. So I wanted to get that out of the way. And I also wanted to mention that that old video, non top of the six perks, mentions a lot of weapons that, as I said, no longer take vouchers. So I want to mention, because they no longer take vouchers, how to get Flux briefly. First and foremost, Collection Book. It's a great coincidence that I'm at a certain level where I have 100 Flux coming up. There are a lot of levels in the Collection Book that give you Flux. I don't know the specific ones. If a commenter down below wants to leave a link to a post or just a comment with all the different levels that you get Flux, please do so. That'd be super useful. Another great way is by doing ventures so this is 49 db super useful website you can see that you do get a weapon voucher at level 13 that's what we're spending today but you also get 100 flux at level 16 and 22 these are very obtainable levels these are super easy that means functionally you can get three out of season event weapons early just by making it to level 22 in ventures i recommend going to level 50 if you want a video on ventures xp or the ventures rewards this season quote unquote but they haven't changed in season four so that video is probably going to be relevant for a while i'll link those both down below if you're interested in ventures i highly recommend it for getting endgame loot because that's what today's video is about now 
that was a lot of information. I hope it was useful to you. If it wasn't, you're probably leaving a comment about how this guy just wasted six minutes of your life. Let's talk about vouchers, how to spend them, and what I recommend. As mentioned, there are some things to consider. Your playstyle is everything. There are some top weapons that are totally worth recommending, but most of them are flexible now. So I'm going to cut straight to the chase. The big weapon that I think every basic player should have is the Discharger. This is like the Save the World starter kit. The Discharger is easily like the new top launcher added in recent history as of recording this video it is insanely good against crowds of enemies i'll link my recent video on the discharger down below and i'll link the video of us taking out the storm king i made something like a dozen videos when this weapon came out because it's that strong this is the one weapon i feel like everybody should have after that after you've gotten the discharger that's where this conversation gets tricky so i am going to be reading off of a list this is something you are welcome to screenshot i'll link archer's twitter post down below he was so great at compiling a huge list of every single weapon that is now voucherable and every single hero that's definitely a follow-up video that needs to happen on that note i need to make another flux video as well because that list just expanded but this is every single weapon that you can now get with a weapon voucher so i'm going to talk through every single one of these the pros and cons and you can decide if it fits your playstyle, if it's something you would enjoy and uh, I will give you some insight as to like whether or not it's useful I have a ton of videos on like 160s loadouts just fun ways to use lots of different weapons this is why I'm glossing over the top meta picks because there are so many different playstyles like the typewriter the typewriter is one of the only weapons I believe the only weapon in the base game section that is only researchable through a voucher it's actually pretty decent I'll show some footage from that 160 video that I mentioned just now it's actually stronger than I expected it did really really good damage it's a really really fun smg with a lot of different play styles and this video doesn't have audio but the video i'm showing does so that link will be down below if you want to hear it it is a super satisfying weapon to use while it might not be the top damage smg it's very very fun and worth having in my opinion is it the first weapon you should voucher only you can say but let's just move on to the event weapons where art deco weapons are all flexible oh i love the current state of this game but the hot mix pistol is basically an smg it shoots two piercing shots that can affect a crowd of enemies and it's pretty decent damage, pretty basic weapon. It can make them dance. It's not the strongest thing in the world, but it can be a little bit of fun. The Staccato Shadow, very similar. It is basically a long range shotgun. It functions more like an assault rifle. It can shoot through crowds of enemies, make them dance, do some decent damage along the way. Pretty low power, but it has a high fire rate, so it can be very fun. The Dessa Blaster, not the strongest launcher in the game at first glance, but the thumbnail of its 160 video talks about deleting a power level 250 smasher, and that's not a typo. This thing, if you bounce it up and down, and use it appropriately is monstrously strong and a very fun weapon to use. If you're looking to have a fun session and play a little bit out of the norm, this is definitely a weapon worth vouchering. Now, a fan favorite that I feel like if you're going to be running the Storm King, everybody should have is the Surround Pound. It is the best non-mythic weapon for the Storm King's Horn. Run it physical, double crit damage, crit rating. I'll link the best perks down below if you want more loadout suggestions because the perks for this weapon do change depending on what you're doing. Surround Pound, you can spam it with the heavy attack. Super fun weapon. The best perks, like I said, down below if you want to see more footage of that it is actually a very strong melee and if you're interested in that kind of play style it might be worth a pickup speaking of the storm king nice coincidence that bundle bus is the next on our list it is a fantastic single shot weapon single target i should add it shoots in bursts of eight which means it has a really good chance to create high high pack a punch damage in single bursts and it's a really really good mainstay for that storm king fight i mentioned the storm king because it's the big boss fight of the game it unlocks five of the strongest weapons in the entire game and the bundle bus will smooth your way to beating him i use the bundle bus for the first 100 fights and i dual wielded it just double bundle bus that did the trick it worked the, the wrath is kind of a direct upgrade after you get to that point but the bundle bus if you're looking to take down the storm king could be a good one you don't need it though you can also use the obliterator or the xenon bow both of which are flexible and this is kind of some updated information i don't know if i'm going to update my storm king video anytime soon link to that down below by the way but the xenon bow actually does fantastic and on top of being a weapon everybody should have it's a weapon you might already have, so you might want to use that versus the Storm King instead, but that doesn't make the Bundle Boss any less amazing. The Bowler, super fun weapon. It's just strong. It's a, it's a launcher that bounces and you can have a lot of fun with that. It does great damage along the way. Super satisfying to use and a fun weapon overall. Is it like a top pick for a voucher? I wouldn't say so, but will you regret vouchering it? I, I doubt it. It's a great weapon. Corsair is a... 
A tier sword. You know, it's not like the top of the line, but you won't notice that when you're using it. It's like the typewriter I mentioned earlier. This might not be topping the melee charts, but it's actually really, really fun to use, super casual, and it has a bunch of six perks choice that change things. So this is one of the first instances where the six perk really matters in my suggestion because affliction makes this a great single target weapon. But if you use its normal six perk where it buffs like the headshot damage of a pistol, I think you can use this back and forth with the Jack's Revenge. I'll link the best perks down below if you guys want to check out the different options for it. It's a fun weapon, definitely fun. Jack's Revenge, same deal. It is the brother or sister of the Corsair, however you want to look at it. It is a fun weapon to be paired with it, but if you want to use it on its own, you can change it to like the Shrapnel 6 perk or the Headshot Explosions. I'm not exactly sure what the options are off the top of my head because it doesn't really matter. You want to pick something that fits for single target. The Jack's Revenge with the right build can hit for over a million damage to the head with no crit whatsoever. I'll link the best perks down below. Definitely a powerhouse of a weapon. I believe, I believe it's the strongest single target weapon besides like the double boiler and launchers don't quote me on that but it's up there it is a very very strong weapon the powder keg is not my favorite bow i did put it in my top five bows video link to that down below it shoots a projectile that explodes on the enemies and it doesn't do a ton of damage but you can run it with affliction which will kill them over time super good crowd clearing bow not the top pick but something you might want to pick up now I'm going to use the Dragon's Fist as an example of if you see any weapon that was on that list I showed earlier that gets skipped in this video, it's because I don't think it's worth a pickup. The Dragon's Fist is one of those slow swinging, mediocre damage, not an amazing weapon. I don't think this is worth a voucher under any circumstance unless you really, really like the weapon for some reason. Next up on our list is the Pain Train. This is one of the staple ARs in the game, in my opinion. You can run it triple crit damage, any element. It has the great look and sound of shooting a train. Super fun weapon. Not the highest damaging AR in the game, ironically to its namesake, but it has a bunch of six perks that change the options. I think it can be Affliction, but I know it has stacking, crit rating, and damage. I might be wrong about Affliction, but you can stack up the damage a lot. Run this thing with like crit rating and then triple crit damage, like I showed in this video down below, or you can run it with like stacking damage in a normal build. There's a lot of ways to run this. I'll link the best perks and the fun 160. It's a really strong weapon, super fun to use. It's available during the holiday season, so you can pick it up one copy in the shop, or you can voucher more if you like. Skipping a couple of pistols here, but the Coco 45 is the first weapon I ever covered in my Fun 160 series. I found out that it could have triple crit damage and an over 700% crit damage at that. Super fun pistol. It's very similar to the Decibl Blaster, where it doesn't do that much single target, but if you lock it inside of a box, I took down a mini boss on my own. It's a super fun weapon, super silly, and if you're looking to have a great time, it's an excellent pickup. Now, a fun addition to this list is the shark attack. This is not a weapon I would have emphasized a ton before, but as I've been saying a lot, I made a recent video on this link down below and it did actually pretty good. It's a decent launcher. It's not the top of the list. The Santa's Little Helper is right next to it. I'll talk about these at the same time. Santa's Little Helper is just one of the best universal launchers in the game. I think it's the best universal one because it can be any element and it's affliction and the perk options are great. It is just the default shoot it at a thing and it explodes. The Metal Marauder is above it on the list, but it kind of relies on specific elements and the six perk to match up to be good. It doesn't do that great against physical enemies. And then the everything above it as well is like the pot shot and the wrath and these are very specific launchers that don't behave normally the santa's little helper just explodes in a crowd not in proximity does excellent damage while it's at it and it's just a great pick the shark attack bounces around it's it, it falls off over range and it does less damage technically but it's super fun do i think it's worth a voucher <sighs> not when it's sitting next to the santa's little helper but it is a fun weapon and i can't knock it for that couple of more options here is the snowball launcher and the easter egg launcher the easter egg launcher shoots a proximity mine that enemies can run into and then the snowball launcher explodes on impact but is locked to water both weapons are super fun they're nice i don't know what else to say high damage semi-auto launchers are always a super fun time and both of them are worth a pickup in my opinion the heartbreaker is actually really good i'm not kidding you i know the best perks for this link down below starts with a rick roll it's actually insanely strong it is the hardest hitting sniper in the entire game that counts all the bows as well it's above the cleaner which is known as a high power sniper and you can run just double pump bows back and forth back and forth and it does insanely good damage i'm not bsing you when i say this is actually worth a pickup is it like the best weapon ever of course not there no weapon is the best weapon ever but if you use this, I think you'd be impressed by the damage, and its versatility is fantastic when you consider that it can pierce through enemies. Definitely a strong weapon to consider. Now, I said earlier that I'll be skipping weapons I don't recommend, but I know the Boombo is way too popular to skip without any words. One reason, one reason not to use this weapon, it is called Reload. 
reload that's it <laughs> the weapon can't reload with a reload perk it's way too slow to be viable if it ever gets a reload perk you might want to pick up the boombo basically take everything i said about the powder keg and apply it to the boombo minus the delay on the fuse but that's it the boombo is nice damage but without a reload perk it's simply not viable Next up on the list is the Dirge Song. This is not a weapon I would have recommended before a few months ago, but I was suggested a loadout, link to this video down below, that makes this weapon do millions of damage every single time you reload. That's not a video you want to miss. It's insanely strong. I also applied that to the Blackout AR. Very, very good combination. You can't vouch for the Blackout AR, which might even be better because I think it's a better pick, but the Dirge Song, Blackout AR, and pretty much anything with that fancy six perk is ludicrously strong if you use it appropriately. Appropriately. I'll let the videos down below explain, but the Dirge Song might be worth a voucher after you watch that video. Now, I was talking about super strong launchers earlier, and I mentioned that the Santa's Little Helper was the best universal launcher. Well, the Metal Marauder does more damage while being locked to physical and fire. So, physical might be the way you want to run it, but if you're using this in a nature zone, you can use the Metal Marauder with a fire element and a six perk that gives it 44% extra damage to nature enemies. That is a super strong combination. If you're in a fire zone, this weapon will absolutely delete anything that is nature. I've got a great video on that. Link down below if you want to see more of that. Super strong weapon. Now, this weapon is actually very similar in performance to the typewriter and it is the gravedigger the gravedigger is a classic weapon it's got the best aesthetic in the entire game in my completely unbiased opinion this weapon is super strong super fun to use and also not the strongest it's weird i used it in game it impressed me i actually had a great time of course this video will be linked down below but it's actually not the highest on paper i think i did my math wrong because this weapon's actually super fun to use it's unironically strong bring this into a nature zone pair it with that metal marauder i mentioned and you'll be having a great evening Spectral Blade, just casually sitting here, unbeknownst to the world that it is the best non-mythic sword in the entire game. Now that's a bit of an asterisk because I don't know if the specific damage makes it the best sword of the game, but like its attack speed is nuts. You can run triple attack speed on this and with Paleo Luna in the lead, you are having an excellent time. If you just farm Paleo Luna damage, the Spectral Blade is super strong, but you can also use it with heavy attack spam. It lunges you forward, it gets you around the map. It's a very, very, very strong weapon, tried and true, and it out damages the mythic Ravager if you run it water in a fire zone. So if you get that elemental advantage, it's an insanely good weapon. It's got multiple six perks with stacking damage and crit rating. Generally damage is better, but crit rating is better if you're running a crit build. I'll link the best perks down below, depending on how you might want to run this. Definitely a weapon you don't want to miss. Now, I already mentioned the Discharger earlier, but I'll give it its proper segment right here. The Discharger is a fundamental weapon of the game at this point. It's only been in the game for like two or three months, but it is ludicrously strong. Look at these 502 Smashers in Frost Knight. I don't even know if we had perks when this video was recorded because this weapon released without perks functioning for some reason, but it still annihilated them. Now, regular Smashers, regular mini bosses, I should say, in typical missions don't take a ton of damage from it because of their armor or the way they get attacked. I'm not really sure. Sure, but the mini bosses in the Storm King fight get deleted from this thing. The Storm King end phase gets deleted with this thing. It annihilates crowds of enemies as you'd expect. It is just a generally very strong weapon. Very deserving of the 30 energy cells per shot. So if you can afford that, it's an extremely strong weapon. It's a must have for every save the world player at this point. But I already mentioned it earlier, so let's, let's not spend the rest of the video on it. Now, a weapon you might not have thought about in a long time is the Ratatat. It is, believe it or not, one of the best SMGs in the entire game. I ran it with triple crit damage. Great video. Link to that down below. This weapon could do tons of damage. It is basically the Swiss army knife of perks. You can run a normal crit build. You can run it with triple crit damage. You can run it however you want. Throw a fire rate perk on it. I don't know. It's Archer's favorite weapon for a reason. If you don't know who Archer is, he's really helpful at providing leaks. He provided that screenshot that I've been referencing this entire video, and uh, he's extremely knowledgeable about the game like I am, and it's his favorite for a reason, so I'll give him a little shout out for that note there. It's a super strong weapon, worth picking up, and extremely rare. The Red Attack does not come around in the shop normally. In fact, because of that, I'll pair it with the Rat King, where the Rat King took over three years to come back to the game. And and link down below to this video, you can run it with first shot Rio to make the first six shots crit every single time. And there's a six perk on this weapon where five hits in a row causes an explosion. Now, if you uh, read the description of this weapon, you'll note that it shoots five pellets every hit. That means you can explode on every single shot while guaranteeing a crit. Believe it or not, 
that's a fun way to run it. So it works a little weird against normal zombies because they die so fast, they don't even explode. It kind of nerfs the weapon in a weird way, but super fun, super strong weapon. Both of these are definitely worth vouchering. And uh, the Rat Rod weapons just pick it up even more with the V6 launcher. This is one of my very few 144 weapons for a reason. Another Swiss Army knife of a weapon. You can run a triple crit damage, a crit build, an all damage build. It's got affliction, which makes it super strong. It can be any element. It's a semi-auto launcher. It doesn't have the highest base damage per shot, but it's a semi-auto launcher. In fact, now that I think about it, I think the V6 is actually a fully auto launcher. I say semi-auto because you're never really going to want to go all out. You only have six shots, unless, of course, you run the insane rocket loadout. Link to that down below. I've been showing you footage from a Fun 160 where I use multiple loadouts. I'll link them both, of course, but this weapon can be used in a lot of different ways. Super fun, super strong weapon. Definitely worth grabbing. Now, these aren't voucher recommendations, uh, but I'm just smiling at the fact that everything in the sci-fi section is now flexible. The new rule says that if it's available in a llama, it no longer costs a voucher, and that's so great. The fact that some of these amazing weapons are just something you can pick up with flux now is so, so good. These are weapons I totally would have recommended before, and as a little hot tip to all the viewers, thank you to watching to this point, the Baron is now flexible. I would have recommended this as a voucher just because it's an insane utility, although on second thought, you might not want to do that because it lasts forever people use the baron like a vehicle so you're not really doing any durability on it you're just running around forever so anybody can just give you a copy but if you wanted your own copy 100 flux is a lot but you can pick it up pretty easily and it's uh just so great and even the double boiler is again no voucher but it's the hardest hitting non-launcher in the game super strong shotgun in fact i got clowned on on stream recently because i always knocked its accuracy but it turns out it shoots a slug <laughs> it's not a spray like every other shotgun i didn't realize it was a slug so i might have to revisit this weapon because the cloud of steam six perk does millions of damage on top of the weapon doing millions of damage great pick not a voucher but wanted to share as for vouchers the jabberwocky take everything i said about the bowler and apply it to this this weapon not only bounces a bit and is extremely satisfying to use but it does one base damage point less than the santa's little helper which is feasibly nothing there's, there's no difference at that but then it explodes into three more cannonballs so if it explodes properly you can like corner a smasher and shoot this into it and do quadruple the damage of the Santa's Little Helper. Super strong. Link to that video down below. Of course, it is so, so good. I love the Jabberwocky. Can you tell? Guardian's Will. This is a weapon that did not come to the shop forever. And then when it came back around, I tried it out. I immediately recorded a video that you're seeing on screen. This weapon's actually really, really good. This weapon does a lot of damage normally, but Affliction on melees is super strong because the way that Affliction ticks is based on like certain mechanics that I never dug too deep into. But my understanding is that melee Affliction is actually a lot more than normal range weapons. Very, very, very strong sword. Super recommended. You definitely want it. And for mobility, it's also pretty good. One final suggestion is a Sir Lancelot. It's really good for like pushing smashers around. If you're an endurance player, it's a weapon you really want. I don't think it's useful or needed for normal gameplay, but it is there if you want it. So... There you go. My live recording this video is about 29 minutes long. I decided to record this on stream. Twitch link down below. So that slowed me down a little bit. And I know that this video is going to be heavily edited. Here I thought, you know what? I'm just going to make things easy on myself. I'm not going to show any gameplay. And then I started recording and I realized that that hope was dead. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I... Recording Beast doesn't know it, but I'm sure this took a lot of work. So thank you, Editing Beast, for putting this together. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Subscribe if you're new. And uh, yeah, take it easy, you guys. <laughs>